What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. And look, man, you guys are getting more content where my voice sounds like this. The issue is I pre-recorded a bunch of content uh, the week that I was sick, unfortunately. Just bad timing, I guess, for getting sick and losing my voice. I pre-recorded a ton of content for when I was out on vacation. I'm on vacation right now, so uh, this was recorded the week that I was sick. But with that being said, I wanted to get you guys content no matter what. Today, I want to talk about cornerstone quarterbacks. So those quarterbacks that whether you are are a rebuilding roster, whether you are a contending roster, you can put these guys on your teams and they will be key pieces to your dynasty fantasy football rosters. The one note with these quarterbacks is that all of these guys have to be at least 28 years of age or younger at the start of the NFL season this year. So all of these guys are 28 or younger. And so we will talk about my top 15 cornerstone quarterbacks. I want to keep the list a little bit smaller because I just truly think that cornerstone pieces, there shouldn't be a ton of them. They are hard to acquire. And even even 15 might be a little bit of a stretch, but we can't do a list of like seven guys. So let's just do our top 15 today. With that being said, let's not waste any more time. Let's hop right into this video and let's start talking about these pieces. All right, so you guys see the tier maker up on the screen right now, and we have five tiers right now, the S tier, the A tier, B, C, and D tier. These are not necessarily rankings. These are tiers. Now, I did say that this is rankings. Yes, these are the top 15 guys, so you can kind of do the math, but I don't necessarily have a strong conviction in the way that you put these guys in the order of their tiers, but the tiers are what is going to be important in how I view these guys stacked up against each other. So we are going to be starting here in this D tier. I'm going to work my way from the bottom to the top. And I have two guys specifically in the D tier. The first guy in this tier is going to be Brock Purdy. I'm going to have him in the D tier. And the second guy is going to be Tua Tungavailoa. So these are two quarterbacks right here where I think these guys are probably undervalued by the community. These guys most likely are going to be receiving contract extensions to stay with their respective teams. We know that both of these teams, the Miami Dolphins and the San Francisco 49ers, they're similar systems and they also have elite weapons in these offenses right now. The Niners, Brandon I, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Ricky Pearsall, lots of good weapons for Brock Purdy. Obviously meaning that he has the ability to give you some spike weeks, give you some high-end production from time to time. He doesn't necessarily have any rushing upside. He doesn't have some of the physical tools of one of those elite quarterbacks in the NFL. So he does kind of have a little bit of a lower ceiling than some of the other guys as well. The same thing can be said about Tua Tungvailoa. I expect him to get the contract extension. You have Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Devon Achan, Jonu Smith now, a lot of guys. Odell Beckham Jr. even in town in Miami. I think he gets that extension. He has the big play ability, still lacks the rush upside. He says he's trimming down some weight, says he's going to be a little bit more nimble this offseason. He's going to be able to run the football, extend plays a little bit more this year. We'll see if that's really true, but uh, both of these guys right now, probably 14 and 15 in my rankings. These guys consist of this D tier right here. Now moving on to the C tier here, we're going to tier up we got a couple guys in this. It's going to be Jaden Daniels, the first quarterback in this tier. We're also going to have Trevor Lawrence as one of the guys in this tier. We're going to have Jordan Love as one of the quarterbacks in this tier. And we will have Justin Herbert as one of the guys in this tier right here. So uh, all of these guys, I think, have higher ceilings than Tua and Brock Purdy. Now, Jaden Daniels, we can start with him. He has immense, immense rushing upside in. Obviously, he's a rookie. We haven't seen him do anything yet, so this is kind of like a wild card throw in, I guess, for this tier, but we know what the ceiling is going to be with Jaden Daniels, or at least we can see what a ceiling can be with Jaden Daniels. I think under Cliff Kingsbury, a guy who has worked with Kyler Murray, developed Kyler Murray into an elite fantasy football quarterback, I think that can be a similar trajectory for a guy like Jaden Daniels, so I think he definitely deserves to be in this tier with these guys, and then you look at the other ones, Jordan Love, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, these guys have those physical tools. Big arms from Trevor Lawrence, big arm from Justin Herbert probably one of the bigger arms in the NFL in Justin Herbert. Jordan Love, highly accurate. He looked incredible last year for the Green Bay Packers. I think all of these guys are guys that can be QB1s consistently. We just probably need to see them do it, and they have just maybe one or two question marks around them right now. Trevor Lawrence, we've seen him give us low-end QB1 numbers. He kind of took a step back last year. Yes, Calvin Ridley has left town, but Brian Thomas Jr. is now in town. I think there could be some real potential for him to potentially take a step 
forward this year as well. We know that he hasn't necessarily been elite. He hasn't had that high ceiling, but he has been consistent and he's been consistently good. So I do think that he is a fine quarterback one for our rosters right now. You could argue maybe that he's not too different than guys like Tua and Brock Purdy, but I think his ceiling is just a tiny, tiny bit better. And that's why I do have him in that C tier. Jordan Love could very easily again this year take another step forward, take himself into that B or even into that A tier, depending on what happens this season, because the Green Bay Packers, they keep building around Jordan Love. He is probably going to get a contract extension to remain the franchise quarterback in Green Bay here long term. I think he's a guy who definitely has a lot of ceiling left where he can still grow as a quarterback player. And I think he is going to be a very solid asset for our teams for a long time. The only thing is we didn't get to see it for a while. He was sitting on the bench. It's not his fault by any means, but when he got the opportunity, he showed up. I like what we saw out of Jordan Love, and I think he's going to be a strong piece for our rosters moving forward. And then Justin Herbert, this is a guy who has all of those physical tools. He has the elite, elite physical tools that we see in those fantasy football quarterbacks. He's mobile enough. The arm is as big as it gets. The issue is he doesn't have any more weapons anymore. Lad McConkey, Quentin Johnston, Joshua Palmer, Hayden Hurst. These are kind of the weapons that he's working with this year. Jim Harbaugh coming over from Michigan. He is going to make this offense a run first type of offense. At least that's what it looks like going into day one. Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator from the Baltimore Ravens comes over as well. I think the ceiling for Justin Herbert is going to be capped until they find him some weapons, but he is one of those elite talents. But unfortunately due to his situation, we've had to pull him down our rankings just a little bit, but I still believe in the player, Justin Herbert. I think he's an elite player. It's probably not a guy that you should be looking to sell unless you can get somebody above him in one of these tiers. But uh, I, I love Justin Herbert. We just had to move him to the C tier now because of the situation that he's in. So now we will go up to that B tier. And in the B tier, I have three quarterbacks. The first quarterback in this tier is going to be Kyler Murray. The second quarterback in this tier is going to be Anthony Richardson. And the third quarterback in this tier is going to be Caleb Williams. And I know, I hear the arguments right now already for Caleb Williams being in a B tier above guys like Jordan Love, above guys like Justin Herbert, Kyla Murray, Jaden Daniels, Tua Tungavailoa. I hear that argument. I am one of the believers that Caleb Williams is an elite quarterback prospect. I think the situation that Caleb Williams is going into here in 2024 to the Chicago Bears, throwing the football to DJ Moore, Cole Komet, Keenan Allen, Romo Dunze. This is one of the better situations we have ever seen a rookie quarterback go into. Now, you could argue that the Minnesota Vikings with J.J. McCarthy and Justin Jefferson, Jordan Nash, and T.J. Hawkinson, it's up there. But Caleb Williams is so talented that I think he has the ability to outproduce pretty much any rookie quarterback we have ever seen in the history of the NFL. That is kind of the ceiling that I think that Caleb Williams has. Now, obviously, just like any rookie, just like any quarterback prospect, he could fall on his face. I think it's going to be harder to do that here in Chicago. I know that some people have some issues with his fumbling issues. I know some people have some issues with character. Some people have issues with anything that he does. I am not super worried about Caleb Williams. I think he's going to be a fantastic prospect. And if I had to make the decision today in a dynasty startup, do I want Caleb Williams or do I want Justin Herbert? Do I want Caleb Williams? Do I want Trevor Lawrence? I am going to lean with Caleb Williams. I think the ceiling is higher than those guys that we've mentioned. So that is my kind of statement for why I have him here in this tier. Now, the other guys, Anthony Richardson, Kyler Murray, these are elite fans fantasy quarterbacks, elite rushing upside, nice arms, great talents all around. They're going to score a lot of fantasy football points for our rosters. So we know that Kyler Murray, he's gotten Marvin Harrison Jr. this offseason, Michael Wilson, Trey McBride, a lot of these assets here that he's going to still be able to throw the football to. But the most important one, obviously, is going to be Marvin Harrison Jr. I think that Kyler Murray and that Marvin Harrison stack is going to be fantastic for rosters moving forward. I know we'll talk about Marvin Harrison in the wide receiver cornerstone episode, but Kyler Murray, I am very high on him. I think some people are not as high as I am. I think he is a dominant fantasy football asset, and I am very comfortable with him moving forward, despite what some people are going to say about the injuries and some of the other things like that. Now, Anthony Richardson, same thing. Kind of a similar argument to Caleb Williams. We haven't seen much from him so far at the NFL level. Just a short, very small sample size before he got injured last year. But when he was playing, he was averaging about the same amount of fantasy points per game as C.J. Stroud. And C.J. Stroud, obviously, we're valuing him very highly, but we did see that for a longer period of time. I think Anthony Anthony Richardson in a full season where he is hopefully healthy for the entire year. I think we will see that fantasy football potential be unlocked. Anthony Richardson, fantastic quarterback for our rosters. And that's why these guys are going to be in the B tier. I just see higher ceilings than the guys below them. These guys can be elite, elite fantasy football producers for our teams. Now let's move on to the A tier over here. Four more quarterbacks in this tier. It is going to be Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, CJ Stroud, and Jalen Hurts. And I'm going to be honest, I think Jalen Hurts has an argument for being in the S tier. 
just based on the fantasy points per game that he has averaged as the starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, but he is going to remain in this tier. And what this tier is going to be is pretty much the have bens. These guys have been elite fantasy football options for our rosters for many years. We know Lamar Jackson has been elite. We know Joe Burrow has been elite. Jalen Hurts has been elite. CJ Stroud, obviously a one-year sample size, but he was very, very good. We can't put him any lower than this A tier. And I think these four guys are probably six of the top quarterbacks that you should probably be drafting in startups right now today to build your super flex teams around. So I like all of these guys, Lamar Jackson, multiple time MVP. The upside for Lamar is still going to be the rushing. I know that he has kind of somewhat shown that he can be a competent passer at the NFL, but we have never seen him show that he will be an elite passer. That's okay. It's not going to be a big part of his game. It never will be. He is an elite rusher. That is what he brings to the table for fantasy football teams, and he's proven that he can win in this system at the NFL level under John Harbaugh. He is going to be fine. I think he is a staple for our teams, but he is probably a guy who will have a shorter shelf life than some of the other guys in this tier like CJ Stroud and Joe Burrow. Now, Joe Burrow, he's had some injuries as well, but we know the story for Joe Burrow when he's on the field. He's dominant. He has some of the best weapons in the NFL. T. Higgins, Jamar Chase on the team right now. A very good rookie as well in Jermaine Burton. I think he's going to be sneaky on this team. Eric All, a decent rookie as well. And you have Mike Gesicki. Obviously, they move on from Joe Mixon, but maybe that just means more passing opportunities for Joe Burrow in 2024. I think he is as good as it gets at the quarterback position. And especially in those six-point passing touchdown leagues, he is still going to be a very dominant player. And he is definitely worthy of a top five selection selection, top six selection in those startup drafts. Now, CJ Stroud, greatest rookie quarterback season of all time. We saw it. It was very dominant. And you look at what they have done to add some weapons around him this offseason as well. They extend Nico Collins. Tank Dell comes in with CJ Stroud during their rookie season. And now you have Stefan Diggs on the roster as well. You also re-signed Dalton Schultz. They are going all in for CJ Stroud during this rookie contract window where they are going to try and win a Super Bowl. They also get Joe Mixon. We just talked about him with the Cincinnati Bengals. He is going to be in the position to take a another step forward in year two and he can fully enter that s tier if he does take that step forward we want to see him get to that 20 point per game type of mark if he gets into that territory he's in the conversation for an s tier type of asset because we have seen guys like jalen hurts we've seen guys like josh allen patrick mahomes be in that 20 to 23 type of fantasy points per game number cj stroud has to do it last year he was around that 18 points per game mark and you have to believe that with those weapons he can do it so i am a firm believer in cj stroud i think if you want to put him above jalen hurts you can i won't you can if you want to though but i think that this guy is a top four dynasty fantasy football quarterback and it's not really up for debate but now we got to talk about Jalen Hurts because a lot of people are fading Jalen Hurts here this offseason last year he was 21.9 fantasy points per game that was second in the NFL he almost threw for 4,000 yards 23 passing touchdowns people are going to say that the tush push it's propping up his fantasy football production and with Jason Kelsey no longer there maybe he takes a hit Saquon Barkley there now too I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue for Jalen Hurts even if Jalen Hurts regresses a little bit. You're talking about a guy who can still be a 18, 19, 20 fantasy points per game type of quarterback with AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Saquon Barkley, Dallas Goddard, all of these guys around him, still a great offensive line. He's going to be very, very good for fantasy football, even if he regresses. And I don't think he's going to regress. So this is an asset that I am buying. I think he is one of the most undervalued quarterback assets in the market right now, because most people, I think over on Keep Trade Cut, they have him at like QB6, QB7. Jalen Hurts, he's my QB3 in Dynasty Fantasy Football. And I think he is going to be a cornerstone piece for a long time, because you look at the age, he's only 25. He's going to be 26 this year. If we're talking about cornerstone assets where today we set the cutoff at 28 years old you're talking about two more years of him being a cornerstone piece and then you're still going to have some years of production for Jalen Hurts as well. And now the last and final tier here, we don't really got to talk too much about these guys. Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, the two top quarterbacks in the NFL, the two top quarterbacks for your dynasty fantasy football rosters. These are the guys you want. They're probably going to be number one and number two every single time you do a super flex draft. If anybody is jumping these two, you're getting a value. These guys are in a tier of their own. Patrick Mahomes, we've seen the NFL success. We've seen the fantasy football success. Last year, a little bit of a step back from the fantasy football production, but we know that the wide receiver core he was going with was not very good. Travis Kelsey was banged up. Patrick Mahomes, he had a down year. I don't expect that to always be the case for Patrick Mahomes. There is not really any other quarterback that you can argue being a better fantasy football piece for your rosters moving forward. Now he has Xavier Worthy, 
Rashi Rice, yes, he might miss some time, but he's going to be there for the Kansas City Chiefs. Travis Kelsey, Hollywood Brown, they're adding some weapons. Patrick Mahomes, he is my number two quarterback, and that is only because Josh Allen has such elite fantasy football rushing upside. And I know there is a bold take here because I think a lot of people might swap these two guys because Stefan Diggs has left town. Stefan Diggs no longer with the Buffalo Bills. If you think that is going to hinder Josh Allen, I'm okay with you swapping these guys. Like I said, I'm not too worried about the rankings within the tiers. I think the tiers are what is important. But Josh Allen's rushing upside makes him my number one quarterback. And yes, he gets Keon Coleman, Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakur, Dalton Kincaid. These assets are still going to be good assets for him to throw the football to. Maybe that means that he's going to rely on his legs a little bit more this year, which could be even better for fantasy football production. Maybe not long-term NFL production, but for fantasy production, that could mean an elite ceiling. Josh Allen, he's been the QB1 for many years at this point. He is going to continue to be a dominant asset, and I love Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes as the top two clear-cut diamond S-tier type of quarterbacks for our dynasty rosters. Now, that is all I have for you guys today. If you did enjoy the video, if you were able to kind of get through this video while listening to this horrible voice, I appreciate it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we will see you guys on our next episode. But until then, peace out.